Bon dia and welcome to Apex Instant Tips episode number 97 brought to you every Friday, well almost every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton, we have with us today our special guest Hayden. Hi Hayden. Uh, great to be here Anton and uh, good to see you even though you are now in Spain. I am, uh, it's currently 6.05 Central European Time for me. Um, so and uh, as I uh, alluded to in the beginning of, uh, it was my bon dia. Uh, we speak Catalan here in the Barcelona area. So I'm, I've been working on that along with my uh, Castilian Spanish. Um, well, bon dia to you. Ah, yes. Um, well, uh, I am technically on vacation. So today's five minute tip should take five minutes. Uh, but I have a couple minutes. Uh, Let's get it I, done. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple minutes afterwards because um, I have a few things to, uh, you know, I have like, uh, there, there are a couple of downsides to today, today's tip. So if you only stay for the five minutes, you're only going to hear the upsides. And if you want to hear the downsides, <laughs> stick around after that. Uh, do you have a couple minutes after that as well? I look forward to it. All right. So we'll try to keep it uh, short anyway. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen and, uh, let me switch ones here, beautiful. Okay, so today's tip is really, um, because we at Insum are changing our username format. My current username at Insum is A. Nielsen, my first name, first initial, most of my last, or my, all of my last name, but we're changing it to first name dot last name. Um, mm -hmm. And that means when we log into our Apex applications, we're no longer, it will no longer say A. Nielsen up here. Oh, I've got Anton, but it would be Anton.Nielsen. Um, any thoughts on problems with that, Hayden? Well, the um, app underscore user is referenced in many locations, traditionally in an Apex application or in the uh, logic. Um, it's tied to your Apex preferences. Um, it's a, uh, tied to your report subscriptions. It's in the um, audit history, uh, typically of tables. Yeah, if you use Quick SQL, it automatically uses app user right there. It sets your created by and updated by to app user. Yep. Um, and so if you were to change your username, suddenly none of that would be tied to you cleanly, at least anymore. You'd have to make special efforts to convert everything or some by some other mechanism. Yeah, that's true. And uh, the honest, Goodness, group is I don't even know how to convert all of the things you mentioned. Um, I have a script right here for convert, and I'll share this for converting your user preferences. But as it turns out, there's a lot more than user preferences that get um, that that use your username. Like you said, report, report subscriptions, uh, interactive report, saved interactive reports, all these kinds of things. Um, and I don't I don't even know how to convert all those. So my and, and so for. For active Apex users, it, it can be a, a major inconvenience to switch users. Exactly, exactly. So my my tip here, and this is great if you um, if you're building an app from scratch, it's a little trickier if you've already got one and you're using this. But my tip is to immediately after a user logs in, change their the value of app user to an immutable value that may be the primary key of your person table. I know at Oracle, you have an immutable GUID that's kind of close to your uh, username. Mine at Oracle was A-I-N, hey, yes, A-I-N-I-E-L-S-E. -E. Most of my last name, my first initial middle edition. And yours is what, Hayden? Hey, Hudso. Hey, Hudso. Uh, right. so, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so hard to remember. Right, so whatever it is, my recommendation is when you, when you create, uh, as soon as a person logs in, um, use a post -auth authentication process to look up the immutable thing from their username and then change the, the app user value to that immutable thing. So, and then, so what I have here is this post auth n as a procedure. I'm gonna put that procedure right here in my post auth n here and apply that change. Now, when I log in, the value of app user, so I'm gonna go ahead and log out and log back in. Instead of my old, my normal one in this workspace is Anton. Now I'm gonna use the same, the same username, the same password, but it's going to look it up. It's gonna get my immutable thing and it's going to put it right oh, here. Nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. And now all okay. you have to do is remember that you are 299213. Right, yeah, that's, that's me right there. 
Um, well, okay, so I, I'm going to say this isn't so much of a downside because what you do next is you just come out here and you, um, and I, I'm going to say first, I'm gonna rewind for a second and say, I do this portion, the portion we just talked about as a post auth end. And the reason I do it here, usually I don't use this. I prefer to do it as an application process after authentication, but this portion could be different if you allow for multiple um, different authentication schemes and you have change and switch in session allowed right here. You might want to do this here because this could be different for each one if you're using Facebook and Google and your own, et cetera. But once you've got them logged in, then you'll have a post authentication application process. So it's at the, the point of after authentication. And that's where you can look up all these other things. You can get your first name, last name, initials and so forth. And I'm going to put the initials. I'm going to go to really quickly, if I have time, to my navigation bar list. I got about 30 seconds left. left. We'll see if I get there. Um, oh, you know what? It's not even going to work because I didn't turn off. But right here, I'm going to put G initials um, and ampersand there. I'm going to hit apply changes. I'm going to see if I have time to go back and take the build off that I had on my application process. Uh, I'm in Spain, so my, uh, my internet connection here is not great, but I think I've managed it. If I can actually, uh, well, there we go. I'm gonna do it just to show people. I'm gonna log out. Um, I think the only thing we actually say we're gonna do on our show is do it within five minutes, and I kind of am cheating, but here we go. Let's see if I get logged out and logged back in. Oh, uh -huh. oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. I didn't quite get it. I think most people realize that it is possible. I, I think people I, believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I've done. Uh, maybe I didn't quite get it to happen, but um, yeah, I mean, that's it. it it's uh, that part was not important. Um, the uh, <laughs> like, it, it, it's not a complicated thing to associate a yeah. primary key back to a user. Um, right. Right. Um, somehow I, I probably didn't actually get the build turned off or something like that. But um, yeah, so that is my tip. Um, I guess if people came in just for five minutes, they can uh, do all the things, drop, uh, yeah, that stuff, the stuff that's on the screen, hit the splat and tell your mom all about the show. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, so, uh, so um, I, we do have a question from Plumin, um, and that's the procedure that updates app user. Anything else that it updates together with that? That, I mean, it also will take care of your sysconfig. Wow. I, I've always just assumed it will set the syscontext. Yes, it much, must set syscontext as well. Um, so, um, yeah, so your Apex Dollar Session um, app user. I'm sure it does because I've done this many times. So um, yeah, so your Apex session, that's all I can think of. It's the the bind variable app user, the, of course, substitution string comes from the bind variable and your your Apex dollar session context will all have those things associated with it. Um, and so. from that point forward, your preferences, your report subscriptions, everything will be tied to this immutable ID. Yeah. Um, that has no reason to ever change. Exactly, exactly right. And in in my case, it can't change if it's a primary key, right? But um, right. yeah. Um, so, uh, and what I will say, just from a downsides perspective, and it's a small thing, but if now when you go to all of the views, right, you look at their, your Apex views and you say, you want to say um, what pages were viewed by what users, you're going to have this this random number in my case. In your case, you'd have H Hudso maybe if you have some other thing, which is at least a little bit more um, intuitive as to who the person is. But if you do use a, a an ID like I did, you're gonna it's gonna be a little bit trickier. You'll have to you'll have to join back to your own person table for those kinds of things. So, I mean, I I think it's still worth it, but it's a, a reason you might consider having uh, something like your immutable one, even if your username changes. So. Yeah, it's a problem people don't think they have until they have it. So, and then once you have it, it's <laughs> it's a bit uh, of a thing. Right, right. And we we did have to go through it here at Insum. We've had to, and some things are just as far as I know, just lost, like report subscriptions and those kinds of things. I mean, obviously, uh, obviously, we all know this is all metadata. If you have access to the Apex schema, you can get it back. But if you're on autonomous or something and you don't have access um, to that underlying schema, well. 
if you're on uh, you know some sort of shared environment, then it's going to be really really tricky. Um, so, right. yeah. Um, so that's it. Uh, uh, anything? Oh, Hayden, I think you have an off-topic tip this week, don't you? I do. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. Great. Um, and uh, have we done that yet? Um, oh, thanks, Paul. I always I was, I was like to get to. Uh, I apologize. I am struggling a little <laughs> bit. There we go. Share a screen. All right. Um, it's always uh, always good good to get go. feedback from well from anybody, but when you know somebody, it's it's nice to get a little think a little. Uh, so Hayden, okay. can you bump that up just a little bit. Oh no, that's fine. I can read it. Yeah. So the the premise of my exercise is let's suspend disbelief and and accept that I need to uh, loop through this query here, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I am interested in the department name and the employee name that that outputs from it. So I've got the amp underscore v table that joins employees and departments. Uh huh. Okay. So so far so good. This is decently relatable. Mm -hmm. So here's the wrinkle. Um, if I were to loop through this, mm -hmm. as is probably no surprise, um, the the employee names are unique, uh -huh. but the department names are not. Sure. And okay. let's further suspend uh, disbelief and accept that I am interested in both the employee and the department name being unique. Oh, so okay. what are my options? Oh, I mean, you could, you could do the, uh, another select statement to get the distinct department names for something like this or, or something of that nature. Um, you're trying to, I assume, do something you do something with all of it and then you're doing another loop through just the departments or something like that right so you could do yeah um yeah so you could do another uh, an, another select statement with a distinct for example yeah so, uh, which um is fine uh, i would like something uh it, l let's um presume that uh, i'm concerned about performance and so i mm -hmm. don't want to uh further consult the, the data. Uh, so the, the solution that you came up with some that PL SQL, to, yeah, I was say some PL SQL memory structure, right? That you're gonna... That's right. Yeah. So I, I credit the solution um, that I employ to uh, Stephen Forrestan. Okay. Um, and it looks like this. So all I do is I declare a, a collection, a, a nested table um, indexed by Varkar. And the um, uh, and I have a local uh, variable that points to it. The clever thing that that um, Stephen Forrestine introduced me to, and this is why it's a tip, is um, I use the index as the repository of the data that I want to collect, which is unintuitive. But once you think about it, it makes perfect sense. So I actually input the department name as the index of my nested table, and then I just put garbage and as the um, as the integer. And then you can lose so it. now, <laughs> so now what I collect in here will be th the unique list of departments. So yes. now when I were to, uh, when I look through this, just to prove my point, the, uh, the departments are in fact unique and the employers are unique. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's, yeah, you know, it's funny. I, I actually had Stephen, I think, point this out to me once in a code review a while back and I be honest with you I don't think I ever actually do it um just because I don't remember to but I maybe now I will remember because we've we've covered it once again to drill it into my brain but I think it's a, a, a really well, clever <laughs> technique right it's really cl clever because that that index actually has value right in this case it has it the does. value <laughs> not just any it, it has va the value you care about yeah and I mean, don't quote me on this, but um, uh, the uh, the performance is uh, it, it is very good. Um, there's uh, so so I, I think from a performance standpoint, yeah. this is much more performant than the alternative, which we had discussed of oh. of looking through the query twice. Or um, I, I don't know if there's another. SQL right, option right. available. Well, well as Plum as Plum and Sense says here, you could use some sort of grouping function in the query or something like that. But but whatever you do is going to require some kind of additional query overhead, right? And this yeah. you just so 
Tossing and and in my personal experience where I recently applied this, querying this view and the related objects was um, uh, was difficult. Yeah. So I, I want to do it once and only once and, and not further complicate, it, complicate the, the query. Yeah, it's like so many of these things, like your, your simple example here would run fast either way, but it's when you get the really complex stuff and you, you're starting to figure out, well, how do I make this thing not take an hour to run? I want it to run in three yeah. seconds. <laughs> so, um, right. oh, yes, well, I'm, I'm glad to have that uh, uh, kind of put back in my head. Um, excellent. Uh, well, Hayden, I'm I'm unsure if I'm around next week. So um, for our vast viewership, I suggest watching for a tweet or some other message that uh, will be around next week. But uh, I'll see you either in a week or two. I'll, I'll be there either way. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for wasting a perfectly good 16 minutes with us. See you sometime. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.